And are you ready? 14 days. Okay. Welcome to the Elk Season Podcast, Season 3, Episode 23. It is 14 days until Elk Season. We are the Chambers Brothers. My name is Harold. I'm David. And today on the Elk Season Podcast... Where did my list go? We've got. We're going to talk about where we're at. With 14 days away from the season, we got to kind of get the skinny on what's going down in the There's mountains. There's something in the air. Can you feel it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, a particular working group from the Idaho Fishing Game that kind of complements things we've talked about on the podcast. We're going to talk about some Alaskan travel bans. Figure that one out when the largest state of the the low of the lower 48, the largest state <laughs> of the United States. Uh, yeah. We're going to talk a little bit more about bear proofing. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, th- th- that ongoing threat of what not to do in front of animals. Yes. So, <laughs> that and probably some more on the Alex Season Podcast. I don't know if if you noticed, but I put the entire Elk Season song at the end of the, of the last two podcasts. So the whole thing. I, did, I saw the last one post. Yeah. But I didn't notice it. At yeah. the end, I was. I think I was in my office. Yeah, and you I just had go all the way to the end. There's just there's no video. There's just a song. Okay, four minutes of four and a half minutes or whatever it is. And put a put a put an, a, a static image of like an elk with a goofy face. I'm just kidding. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I should. A, c- right. a scenic a scenic uh, clip. Right? Pictures. Oh video. yeah, you're right. You, you've you're got right. the stuff right. Mm-hmm. Just throw I it, do throw in montages of all the Actually, stuff that that's we've what got. I sh- that's what I should do. I should take all the video we've already had and put it to your song. Our okay, song. I kind of right. call it our song. We, okay, our song. <laughs> I think we did, didn't we have JetGPT help us with that live on a podcast. Uh, we maybe we did. Maybe we did. I got a sermon I am, I've been working on too that, that but, I've been practicing. Yeah, JetGPT mostly but, wrote uh, that for me. But all that being said, you can cut any uh, or all of that out if you want. But that yeah. was still kind of fun. Um, I'll pay more attention. That's okay. So, <laughs> at, the end of the day, at the end of the, the cast. Now. Uh, <laughs> Where are the elk? What are they doing? Yeah. They're raking. They're raking. You they think got, they're raking? They got the itchy. Yeah. I've, I've been seeing videos okay. all over all over the scroll, and uh, and they are out there. The velvet's coming off in some areas. It's coming off, and it's, it's, it's itchy, and it bugs it's them. It's interesting they, how it varies from place to place. Yeah. Yeah, and and by the age of the animal. Yeah. And it has a lot to do with the, the available... Yeah, because nutrients, we're, yeah, and specific genetic code. I suppose where we hunt in 2013, my first year up there, the first two elk yeah. I ever came across, and I've told the story many times, both in full velvet, yeah, four point and a spike, just yeah, it was cool. And uh, the so that's that's where we believe the elk are right now. It's been very hot out, uh, so I imagine the elk aren't moving very much. They are in the gullies, they're in the shade all day, every day, lying in the. Lying in the Lot, damp, cool grass. Lots of smoke still. Fires and, going yeah. on, but uh, but they're losing their velvet. But and and I they've they I feel like if I, unless I miss something somewhere, I feel like it's been a healthy year uh, for food and water. So do I. So do I. It's so, been it's been a relatively slow spring. Um, I, I we will we'll have a, our next podcast. I'm I'm gone next week for the Mountain West Fitness Competition. Good luck with that or whatever that is. And I know I'm going to need it. And uh, after that um, is is the beginning of elk season. So we will record a podcast in the truck on the way up, and we will record the other half in the truck on the way down. Sure. And give and 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 we'll talk about here's what you can expect from that podcast. What did we see? Are there bachelor groups? That's a really important. Is there velvet? And is there bachelor groups? How much noise? How do you mean? Oh like, yeah, right? are they talking? Are they, at are all? they talking? Are they right? talking at all? Yeah. Sometimes I've had them talking in, on opening weekend, and I've not heard anything until closing day. Yes. Yes. So, so and I, I really want to get up early, and of course I always do, and and see and see if they're the bachelors are grouped up, which was a which is something we usually see Labor Day weekend. Right. Last year we did not see that. It was a slow weekend, if I remember right. Yeah. Yeah. We, we almost got snubbed. If I we we saw something, did we see anything? Uh, I think it was something I, way up high on the last day. Like we were already having to leave. Yeah, I and don't know. Was, I don't know. I'd have to look at my phone. Yeah, I don't remember. And see, I know, um, I know we usually, I know we saw elk, but we usually see bachelor groups, and yeah. it was noted that there weren't bachelor groups. Yeah. Um. So we, I know that we did see elk, but we didn't see the usual bachelor groups. That's, um. 
maybe that's why my memory is kind of faulty right now. And so we will see, we will see, um, and we will also have camera footage. Um, um, we'll have trail cam footage from our elk area yeah. and give you and let you know because um, we we both That's checked right. the dates so hopefully the dates are still right. That's right. And then if we have time, we can go see if if your uh, other camera is in that other oh, secondary yeah. location. If we have the time and energy. Yeah. That's way it was way up there. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> you pointed so, it out. I'm like, so yeah, yeah, that's the yeah, that's the next. That's the that'll be the next podcast. Um, we'll be after elk season starts, and we'll see where we are after that. Yeah, yeah. So it, it always comes so fast. January. Yeah. See, after the season, you kind of you you finish out talking about everything you've been through in the year, yeah. and then when January rolls around, and we kind of hit our new series uh, of the season, it feels like it's so far away. But then days like today yeah. happen. It's like it's right there. It's right there. It's always right around the corner. I've been trying to get in extra leg day, if you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> I do my elliptical. I go for extra walks. Yeah. Uh, I'm just I'm trying to do more. Yeah. So, uh, interestingly enough, uh, you brought to my attention, and I'm usually I'm savvy to this stuff. I, I read the emails from Fishing yeah. Game all the time, but I somehow just missed it. Uh, seeking uh, members here in Idaho for hunting and advanced technology. A hat working team, uh, working group to assess public perspectives on what technology is or is not in considering yeah. a fair chase. And I like this yeah, because it, it seems like uh, it, it, there's a lot of different faucets of our, our society where the laws that were made once upon a time did not keep up with the times. And so I like right. that they're, they're asking for a working group and they're asking hunters to submit, to participate yeah, um, to help us update what that should mean. Right. And, and, and it's not that I think that they're too far out of alignment with where they're at, but there's some nuances that would be nice to kind of change. Right. And they've started to make some changes. Right. L lighted Knox is, is a fabulous uh, ability now. I really like that. Uh, and the other thing, oh, the, I, I had a thought okay. actually on, on, and I don't know if I'm off range on this, but with, with mechanical broadheads, I had a thought today yeah. about mechanical broadheads and what that, why, cause I'm not a fan of mechanical broadheads. Okay. But I had a thought, so I'm gonna cut. Let me circle back to that one. Okay, okay. But because we're, we're still on this uh, working group. <clears throat> oh yes. But, any, but anyway, but but getting the working group together, I'm interested in looking into it, seeing if I have yeah. time to to volunteer for that and be a part of it. As we've said yeah. many times, you, if you see something uh, as an initiative with your local uh, Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks per your state, <laughs> fish and game. Yeah. Uh, or, or what's the other one? The the natural resources. DNR. DNR. Department of Natural Resources, yeah. Answer surveys. Participate. Yeah. Go to events. Talk to your local uh, um, fish and game uh, yeah. people because and, and, that's and how you can we talk about We talk about this technology, and the technology is moving so fast. The, the advanced technologies they have with scopes, with thermal. I mean, there are some scopes, and I've made jokes about them before, but there are some scopes that come with an app. And you tell them your altitude, yeah. And you you tell it the altitude that you're shooting. You're just a trigger for the gun, yeah. You're you're not a sportsman, really. I mean, it, it you're just less and less and less. Which again, I'm all for when hunting wolves. I will go ahead and get the the scope that needs an app to be accurate at 800 yards. I'd be okay with that, but but it does remove some of that sporting element that we're looking for when we're hunting elk. That I'm looking for when I'm hunting elk. So. Um, and so when we talk about drones, we talk about, uh, I talked about drones and how a drone could, could do a complete survey of anywhere you could hike in a given day and tell you how many deer, how many elk, how many bear, how many lions, whatever there is, I could do a complete survey for you the night before you hunt and tell you where those animals are. Is that fair chase right now? It's legal, but is it fair chase? I would argue that it isn't. Yeah. I know, I know just by me having the thought, I am pushing the boundaries of what the law is meant. Yeah. Right? I understand. I understand that. And that's why I ask those questions because it's it's a little bit over the line. And now there's a group that goes, hey, let's let's have better discussions about where that line is. Yeah. Because there's there's new aircraft coming online that people can buy just like they buy four wheelers. Just like they buy side by sides, so right. You, so clearly, you can hear there's a broad range of application for this yeah. this group. So oh, yeah. As much as I was talking about updating old laws, and it really is all about that anyway. Yeah. But it's also considering the new technologies. So, yeah, 
and the guys, the guys, the guys doing drones. Um, not only can they carry people, but I mean they're they're making them safe for people, yeah. safer for people. Yeah. <laughs> but but they can also help retrieve animal. Is that fair chase? That's not that's not part of the chase. But it would be considered fair chase because, like we talked about um, before in the podcast, you're not allowed you're not allowed to use a drone to find a deer you've already shot. Okay. In yeah. some states, yeah, yeah. In some states, which is ridiculous. That's considered not fair chase. I've already chased it. I've already shot it. Anyway, so and it, there needs to be committees of people to keep up on laws like that to make sure yeah. things make sense because the politicians are too old to really do anything worthwhile. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, who? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, so we'll be, regardless of however I may or may not be able to participate in that, I'm going to, and then you'll be probably in similar shoes, uh, really interested in watching this unfold and yes. how that, that takes. Yes. And definitely talking about it here on yes. the Elk Season podcast. So more on that. Smash the like and subscribe, bruh. Yo. <laughs> Smash it. As Share. The kid, as the kids say. Leave a comment. <laughs> um, let me circle back to this uh, thought I had on mechanical yeah, broadheads, yeah. which are legal here in in Idaho. Almost wow! <laughs> I think I desire somewhere to move back to Montana. <laughs> um, so there was an episode of was it Elk One Hundred and One? Um, you know, Corey Jacobson's channel. Yeah, there's a guy. He's got this elk broadside, and the the arrow bounces off. The yes. Elk. Upon further review, especially looking at the anatomical layers of an animal yes it didn't make sense that it would have bounced off from right there and they're like it looked like a shoulder but maybe it's just a really big shoulder on that shoulder blade shoulder blade on that right. bull but everything about the placement of that shot said it should have gone in yeah i know so it tells me that there's some robust skeletal bones and and things on these animals yeah so the thought i had and again not a biologist i have no <laughs> idea still not interested in 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 um these uh, mechanical broadheads, but could in theory a mechanical broadhead penetrate better so that a piece of it isn't going to hit a bone and it has more opportunity to penetrate before it yeah. eviscerates the internal? I, I don't know. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. I'm sure there's all kinds of nerds to answer and, it. And there's probably I'm not one of them. <laughs> I, and I'm probably overthinking it too. Like there's probably. But, but you're right. When a, when a mechanical broadhead opens, it is broader. Than a traditional broadhead because it doesn't. It's made to save that time in flight, right? And mm -hmm. when it opens, it can open up bigger because it no longer needs to fly anymore. So, so the mechanical broadheads, I've, I mean, those are the ones I see, right? They open up a little bit broader. So when you spread that area out over a piece of shoulder blade, yeah, is it is that so much surface area that it bounces off? So that, is, is that the, what you're that, saying? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> in fact. As you're talking, I'm realizing the flaw in what I was trying to say. Oh, okay. Because of what you're saying. Okay. So, and if that makes sense to anybody, Good comment luck. below. Yeah. Please like and subscribe. <laughs> because I, I realize that it's sometimes I get in my head and I just overthink it. And now I'm. Oh. But it's it's not that it's bad conversation. It's just food for thought, really. Okay. So, let's move on, shall we? Anyway. Okay. Um. Largest state in this country. Is Alaska? Yeah, yeah, and its and its population is how big? Uh, it is the it lowest. Is, it is the lowest per square mile. Per square mile, it's not the lowest because <laughs> you have my, Wyoming somehow. Wyoming is the lowest. Still yeah. has that. Yeah, but uh, but it's a hot spot. Yeah, for travelers, and I've always wanted to go to Alaska. Yeah, me too. Um, but there's um some concerns going on and it has to do with things we've talked about the yeah. lines at the ski lift if you will yeah this is this is and and you know any tourist destination which the mountains are a tourist destination we talked about how busy hikes are yeah and how someday you might have to get a permit you can't go hiking on that day your permit's not for that day yeah right you have to go a different day so some of these places are getting crowded now we live in idaho what's left of the West. Yeah. And so we're going to be the last ones crowded out. I'm sure there's hikes in, in LA, right. Yeah. And yeah, in yeah. the Sierra Nevadas that, that are, that are so crowded. Um, but the, uh, but the crowding issue is it's even something John Oliver talked about on his show, on his show on HBO. He talked about yeah. Maui last and, week tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he talked about the tourism 
being, you know, there's still tourists going to Maui, yeah. right? And they're like sitting on the beach and like drinking drinks and drinking slushies and like, oh, hey guys, still don't have houses yet. Bummer. Yeah, everything. Yeah, right. I lost everything. I love the Mai Tai, I'm still, looking, I'm still looking for my family. Like, right, right. I still, but I love the Mai Tai. Good, hey, good luck. Hang loose, brah. Right. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, tourism is is getting out of hand in some ways. And now I have read. I have read a lot of books. Uh, I know I talk about them a lot. I've read The Sixth Extinction. I've read everything Jared Diamond wrote. I think who's a the author of Guns, Germs, and Steel. And I have read 1491 and 1493 yeah. and similar books on global ecology. Yes. And I I can surmise the best thing that you can do for the for the ecology of the world is travel by foot only. Yeah. I... And 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 don't travel great distances. When we travel great distances, that's when we bring pathogens into new areas. When we when we travel in cars or in jets, there's there's so much emissions, and 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 so many people are able to travel such great distances now. It's insane, and they can all go to Tahiti. Yeah. They can all go to Alaska. They can all come to Idaho, and we aren't ready. <laughs> right. No, it's so it's so as soon as bag though on right travel. as soon as let's say let's say craters of the moon erupts. It's still an, an active volcano. Yeah. It's only 2,000 years cold, right? And it's still listed as an active volcano. Huh. Imagine if that erupted. Imagine the tourist nightmare we'd have. Oh, yeah. I mean. Sorry, sorry Arco. <laughs> dude. Dude, it would be a nightmare. Carrie. So, so ever, you know, people, I think people started to realize what they've been missing in their lives in 2020, and they all wanted to be in the mountains. That's yeah. how I feel. I, I don't I, know if that's I, true. Well, it certainly shows up when you try to find a camp spot on a Friday afternoon. And I Whew. and I can't blame them. Me that's either. how I've always felt. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I really guess we, can't. I guess we were the lucky ones. I can't curse them for that. I know. So there's, there's places we used to go where it would be desolate, and now yeah. it's packed with campers packed. and tents. Insanely and, packed. And side-by-sides and motorcycles. Oh, and, and noise. Four-wheelers. And, and, right? And it's their public land too. Yeah, yeah. And it's not, it's not, uh, you know, it's not uh, wildflower. With that one girl with the guitar, only knows the chorus of American Pie. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're sitting around a campfire singing just the chorus of American Pie over and over again. I'm, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it was called Wildflower for a reason. Oh yeah, they they were all special. It was a great time, man. Anyway, <laughs> ninety nine. So, so yeah, a lot has changed in those twenty five years that that we've been spending heavy duty time in the outdoors because we were there for a week. Yeah, like eight or nine days, and we saw one soul before Saturday night in yeah. seven days. We, we saw, saw lots one. of cars during the day, but we didn't. Yeah, we never ran it, and we go all over those roads up there, all over the place. Yeah, yeah, it and just. We, Went to went into salmon for some what are those oh, Western burgers. Western oh, burgers, yeah. yeah. A burger with onion rings on it That's and good barbecue stuff. sauce, and oh yeah, <laughs> it was a good time. Anyway, anyway, so those are our, those are the tales from the trail. So it's interesting to see how different areas are reacting to this over tourism. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let us know what it's like where you're at, unless you live near Zion National Park now. Um, that's one of the bad places. Uh, okay. Um, how to, so let's talk about, we, we talk a lot about bears. Yeah. Uh, bear proofing. Yeah. So, uh, there's some new concepts. You kind of showed me a video and and the idea is not to hang your stuff in a tree, but to put it in a container that a bear can't get into, but also can't carry off. If, if your food is in a bag, a bear can open and IE tear apart, then, hanging it in a tree is not going to do much good because bears are clever. And they can also climb trees. They're used to that shtick. They yeah. know. They go, yeah, they can just they can just see. You know, we see, I, I've shown you all kinds of bears cl- go climbing over fences and, and hanging on clotheslines yeah. and wiggling their way into places. Man, they're clever. Yeah, they are. They're smart. And if they know there's food up there, if they can smell it well, and their did, nose is so wh- good. What you've been saying, they're driven by their stomachs? A hundred percent. A hundred percent driven by their stomachs. In fact, if you come across, I've been thinking about this because this this actually works in this conversation. Um, and that is when when I saw the bears last year when we were out bow hunting, we saw a, a sow and two cubs. 
Um, but we saw them on such completely different parts of the mountain. I'm sure they were the same sow and two cubs. Um, but but to, to know that that's what they do, they're looking for all these berry patches. Berry patch, berry patch, berry patch. Because in that time of the year, they need to spend almost 18 hours a day eating. And when they find a berry patch, they know where that berry patch is, right? Yeah. And so, and so if you ever find a berry patch and it's a good one, maybe just stay there. Maybe just stay there and wait for the bear to come to you. A bear will come around. Because yeah. a bear, if there's berries there, a bear knows that there's berries there. But you don't want the bear to come around. No, I do. I'm hunting. As a hunter, I, I do. Oh, as a hunter. As a yeah. hunter, I do. But the, the, the way it works in this example is they know where the campsites are. Yeah. Right? They yeah. know. And if they're trained, if they're trained, oh, this is where the campsites are. This is where the food is. They're going to go back and back and back again. And they make the rounds to different campsites. Yeah. Right? They go, well, there's no food here. Let's go to this other one. There's no food here. Let's go to this other one. Oh, there's food here. Let's go to another one. They just and, make the rounds and there's more than one bear doing it. And I don't know if I understood the video you showed me correct, but they were saying at least at Lake Tahoe, it's a law in Tahoe yeah. to bear proof your campsite if in you're a certain camping, way. If yeah. you're camping, it's a law to have a bear proof container, not hang it oh. in a tree. Gotcha. It has to has to be a container that a bear cannot get into. So you can hang it in a tree if you want, but it really won't help. <laughs> This is more like a bear pinata at that point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, if if we don't improve the, the encroachment of man's behavior, and this is sounding awkward, I'm, my, my English guys. <laughs> if we don't improve our behaviors as we continue to encroach on ecosystems, yeah, we're going to have more bears that could be considered what I heard in this other video, level three. Yeah, the level three bear, the level three bear, uh, category three is what they call it, like a hurricane. Sorry, category. Yeah, I know. Category three sounds better. Don't category want a category th- four or five. A category three bear is is going to be, it needs to be euthanized because now its entire life is campsite to campsite to campsite. And all there needs to be is the one dummy. Oh, there's a bear. Get the garbage. Just throw it out there. I got my phone on. Right? There just yeah. needs to be that guy. And now the bear knows. Yep. Campsite to campsite to camp. Oh, oh, honey, get to, oh, we have some extra buns. Just throw them out there. I got my phone. It'll be fun. And that bear, they go to campsite after campsite yep. after campsite. And that's what happens. And that's a category three bear. And it's going to be euthanized. Yeah. There, there comes a it's... cold time. There comes a time when people aren't camping. And they've, got a, they've come accustomed to people food. And now they really want what's in your camper. Yeah. I right? Right. Now they really want what's in your house. Yep. And that's what they're looking for. So it's a category three bear and it's bad news to condition like that. It's good news as a hunter. As I, as I think about it hunting, I think, gosh, if there's a good berry patch. And you're hunting could, bear. Yeah. And I'm hunting but bear. Camping, and I'm always yeah. hunting bear every September. That's, that's, you know that's that fair, about yeah. me. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> if I see a bear, I'm yeah. hunting that bear. Oh, you get excited. That, I do. I, one I didn't see, but you saw run across in the backyard. Yes. I disappointed I was lo- not looking that direction. Yeah. I think we were both looking across, though. We were. We were both glassing. Because there was that elk over there. But and it was, I, moving, it was I, moving so fast. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm not going over there. Yeah. That was that year. <laughs> anyway, uh, Hangry Dave. Oh, so, that's all right. Um. But but there's other ways to so so primarily these tend to be like black bears that are coming to our camps uh, for our food right not that a yes. grizzly bear couldn't yes. but grizzly bears are on their way their their numbers are growing yeah uh, Wyoming has uh, Wyoming and Montana are both petitioning right. to say hey we need to delist uh, and I, I I feel like there was something similar with the wolves and the western states that had the populations and they're like yes. hey we need to delist it, so, it, it took them a while to do it but and, then, and, this, and that's kind of what we talked about last week yeah and so just m- more on that front you know with with people taking notice and people pro- yeah. posting videos and commenting about how the the Wyoming and, and Montana governors are saying hey look yeah it's it's time to do something different with the way that we're managing these predators and we posted a video on it yeah. because we talked about it I sliced it out of the podcast last week and we posted a video and it got some engagement and people yeah. were talking about well listen grizzly bears do not belong in utah colorado or california there's no habitat for them right and so the question is is the habitat changed enough that they're they no longer grizzly bears would no longer could no longer live peacefully yeah. in anywhere in california yeah, that's Colorado the thing. or Utah. So, 
yeah, before we jump uh, onto yeah. one side of this argument, what we need is better studies to help us understand with the, exactly. with the vast areas that are left that are unpopulated, is yeah. is anything really unviable? So uh, it's not to discount what people's cons- uh, comments are there, but I, I just don't know the data to support the statement that it's absolutely not capable right so right i would imagine that it is and you're right studies need to be done or the, there's if, probably if studies that there have been we done. need to just know so yeah but anyway i like data so so the question the question i was posing was um are are hikers part of the ecology or are hikers there to visit the ecology Right, and with my my mindset, you hike, you pack it in, you pack it out. Yes, I'm there to visit the ecology. I don't, I I don't want to be impactful on it, other than you know, killing and taking some of the animals. <laughs> right, I mean, I know, and that I know that that sounds bad, <laughs> but I want to be, I I I want to make as a minimal an impact as I possibly yeah. can. And to be honest with you, I'm not killing that many animals. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I never have. To be honest, so, squirrels and chipmunks, maybe. So, but but leaving leaving it clean and and better than I found it is other than incidentals like a lost camera. But <laughs> yeah, you know. um, yeah, I've I've packed out lots of trash. I've also yeah. dropped a couple of things, not on purpose, but I have found some stuff that's been left intentionally. And oh, that sure. groins. Oh me. yeah, don't get me going. <laughs> that tightens my jaws. Yeah. <laughs> um, this brings us to our last story. Oh, okay. What you know? How not? To, in a way, it still piggybacks off everything we've talked about. It's like, don't leave your food out. Uh, pack out what you pack in. Don't train the animals. And, and if you see a wild animal, particularly a wild animal with a baby, yeah, let it be. Yeah. Oh, big time. So. Big time. You show me that video, and there's all these hikers out there, and there's a big old uh, moose cow, yeah, and a calf, and I'm just like, aren't? Isn't yeah. that one of the most dangerous situations to come across in this, nature? This is this is the dumb lady who would feed a bear just so she could post it. Yeah. Right. Oh my gosh! Look at it. it's got a baby. I, I, we're hiking. Oh look, it's got oh, a baby. Oh my gosh! It wants me to pet it. Mamas are dangerous. Mama moose, mama mooses are really dangerous. Mamas are dangerous. Anyway, yeah. So and there's someone. Oh, just walking down this trail. Oh, look. And I don't know. Is she in Yellowstone? Is she in? Who knows? California. Maybe, I don't maybe know. those animals are habituated to it. But I, that that's that furthers the problem. Yeah. Because even though they might be habituated to a lot of hikers, doesn't make them any less of an animal. And all you need to do Indeed. to appreciate that yeah. is watch any episode of Fatal Attractions <laughs> streaming Ever. on Amazon Prime. Yeah. They are not your friends. They yeah. will eat you if they're hungry enough. When they when they feel threatened and, they will. and you're a little too close, they will fight. And if they're hungry enough, they will eat. And and anyways. I took my Komodo dragon straight back to the, the store. <laughs> like I I don't want his paralyzing saliva, saliva to get under my me. skin. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> So, uh, I don't know why I had to throw I heard that if you in make there. a smoothie with it, it could get you high, though. Woo! <laughs> it's like that special uh, honeycomb from Asia. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. What do they call that? I have no idea. High honey, buzz or, uh, honey? I don't know. It might be from Vietnam, but I, 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 right. I'm just I'm pulling on dumb strings here. And I've, all right. I need all to, right. Like, Until elk season, then. We will, we will talk to you from the truck on the way into elk season and on the way back out, and we'll give you the, the situation report. And uh, anyways. Wish us luck. Or at least me. I haven't had buckle any Buckle up. Don't skip leg day. Goodbye. In the morning light, before dawn, bow grip tight, heart beating strong, through the forest. Giants roam in the land where the wild calls me home through the whispering pines and the autumn breeze, driven by the chase, crisp air I breathe with every step I take, earth beneath my feet in nature's beauty where the hunter. Yeah.
and the autumn breeze Driven by the chase, crisp air I breathe With every step I take, earth beneath my feet In nature's beauty where the hunter and elk meet Silent as the morning man shadow, every sound surrounds me in this wild embrace. The challenge and the thrill, the patience and the skill, in the dance of life and nature, my heart's forever filled. As the sun sets, shadows long and deep. I find my place with the memories I keep The chase and the beauty of a day gone by Deep in the mountains my spirit cries Through the whispering pines and the autumn breeze Driven by the chase, crisp air I breathe Every step I take, earth beneath my feet In nature's beauty, out where the hunter and elk meet Here's to the wild places Where the elk and I will grow The chase that brings us closer I am one with nature's wonder, with my bow here 